All right, well that was quick. So while we were away, uh, I managed to look up the specs on these carbs and I had said one and a half turns out on the pilot. Some of them are one and a quarter, some are one and a half. I don't think you'll do wrong with the one and a half, but the spec sheet is here out of the manual. There's also a sheet here describing how they all go together and looks like so far so good. I uh, got her done. So, the next part on our agenda is to do carburetor number four. And I thought what I would do is just do it without describing every little thing. And then you get a recap of what we did, as well as uh, you get to see it happen one last time. I promise it'll go a lot quicker. Uh, so, just a little bit of lube will do you good there. We'll go ahead and pop that guy in. Oh, again, am I doing that straight the right way? It only goes one way. It's got to be this way. Hmm. Why does it feel like it's binding? It just needs more lubricant. Okay, this is getting seriously crazy. Oh yeah, there you go. Might help if you try to put it the right way. So, for those paying attention, <laughs> the round hole goes towards that end. Wow, that was way tougher than it needed to be for no reason. Okay, so we're going to set this needle back by moving the heat clip up one as we did on all the others so we're using the the middle setting just fine I'm a middle of the road kind of rider all right needle it's going to go into the hole in here it finally decides it wants to and then we're going to get you and you and drop you all in here just one timer Ooh, a little tight get you all in here nice fat o-ring here Black screws on the top. Hmm, I hope I bring this into view. Okay, good and tight. Try not to put too much weight on this because it will slide up and down until it's secured by the next step. So. Now that we're on the bottom, pilot screw. And since I went one and a half on all the other ones, I'm going one and a half on this one too. You can always adjust it later on the bike. Alright, seated. Half. One. Half. Boom. Take our block. Jet block is in place. Copper washer. Do flicky. Seven millimeter bolt. Just tight enough to make you happy. Emulsion tube and main jet. Also good and tight pilot jet. Nice and tight. Um, that's for something else. This is good. And what else 
else we got here? I'm gonna lube that other guy a little bit. Pop it back in his home. Nice little screw. Make sure that's all in there. Looking good. I think it goes on just like this. And then we're looking for some brass screws. I see one brass screw. Where's the other one? Oh man. Missing a brass screw. Okay. Well, for the sake of the video, assume that we uh, put both screws in there because I will go find that. But I just wanted to show you guys something special. So this carburetor has this little tab that goes on the heater and provides a ground for uh, all the other carbs. And it just kind of sits on there like so. And then you screw in the heater, same as the other guys. Just like this. And get that a little crank down. Of course we want our enrichment circuit. So when we pull the darn choke it does something. Go on. Click and clack. Here you go. You'll know it's in because it's flush. No, it works. Because it works. And other than that missing screw, there you have it. Stay tuned for the racking video. All right, you may wonder what the heck is going on here, but what I've been doing is practicing trying to get these carbs back together. So if you look, uh, basically I flipped them over so you've got one at this end, two, three, and four. Um, on number two, let's say, you can see that there's a spring with a screw and a spring without a screw. The throttle from one goes in here. And basically you have to work somehow a way to squeeze this thing down while you're inserting the throttle. Also paying attention that this spring has to be here. Now what's nice is when it locks in, it will lock in between these brass bosses on the next carb body. So, I managed to do it between three and four. I'm now gonna try to do it between two and three. I don't know if you guys can see so well, but the spring is here, the um, attachment is here. So, I'm gonna bring them close together. And grab this spring and pinch it down the best I can. Now these very much control the balance of the carbs. So when you go in and you get your carbs balanced, this is what's happening is they're modifying how much and when each throttle butterfly opens. Oh, I got her, I got her, come on, oh yeah. So, by pushing that there, you can probably just tweak that screw a little bit that spring I should say. Okay, so now that I have that, I don't want to lose it. I'm going to use a little piece of duct tape. Can't fix it, duck it. And hopefully they'll stay together until we proceed to the next step. So this one's even trickier because we've got this stupid spring not to lose, which goes there. All the while doing what we just did on the other carb and not screwing up the first three. So pinch this, move your carb into place. Oh my goodness, did you go? Yes, yes you did. Oh, and you're just needing a little tweak. Oh, perfect. So there's a bank of carbs now. 
I don't want to move them. I know it's maybe not perfect for here, but I don't want to cause any trouble for me right now. Basically, you've got two um, bolts that go all the way through the carbs, and they have these separators. There's a um, set of aluminum ones where there's a long and two shorts, long going in the middle, and there is this other bolt that's got a set. There's two really shorts and one long, and they're the opposite uh, bolt. So, uh, through these carbs, if we're looking, the one set is up here. And that's going to be my longy shorty. And I believe that the way the choke mechanism works is, oh no, I think it goes this way. Let's just verify. So if the choke goes this way, which it definitely does, then that means that this long bar goes with this uh, at the end that is the number one carb. So I'm basically just going to take that bolt and washer off, pull these three units off, and then I'll feed this in from the end, giving it the first, then the middle, very delicate because you don't want to be forcing anything and splitting apart all that work you did on those throttle springs or else you gotta take it all apart again and do it all over and I don't like doing that if I can help it okay so slide this the rest of the way home just like that now does that look right yeah that feels right so, I'm going to take our end here, our nut. If I had to guess, I'd say it was 10 millimeters. Oh, and I would be right. Let's see. Here. 10 mil. Well, that would be. Be a little better now that it's tighter. So I'm gonna kind of cinch that down because um, something tells me that I missed some step here. And in fact, we might be in trouble. Let's just see. Because if I come back to this side, I've got all these fuel tubes fuel tubes. So there's these two that are flat that are going to go here and here and there's this one that is um, has a T and that's where the fuel line connects and it goes in the center. And now of course because of the way that I've pulled these apart I'm going to have to start all over. Darn it. Okay well there you go YouTube. You've got what you need to know and uh, you can suffer with me, but for now what I'm going to do is kill the camera and figure this thing out. Um, yeah, so we're going to have to put all the loose parts first. Maybe I won't kill the camera. Maybe we can all learn together on this. What do you say, YouTube? Okay, so we're going to need to undo what we had just done. Pain in the ass, but it's necessary. It's all in the name of learning. And each time I do one of these, I get a little better. And next thing you know, I'll be able to make a couple bucks cleaning Suzuki carburetors. Okay, so, man, I have to pull the whole thing apart again, which is frustrating, let me tell you. But, whatever so pop 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 all three are gone so at the tops of the carbs are these stupid hookup you know um, California EPA hoses they go in this hole here like so and then they'll join together to the next carb as you can see and you've got the fuel 
delivery line which goes in this hole here and there's also a hmm, what do I call that it's kind of like a dump line which relates to the fuel overflow and I don't know if it goes on these ones or if it maybe goes in the center let's just see here it's gonna be a fuel tube yeah I don't see these performing any any decent function whatsoever they're kind of manged and let's look at our diagram shall we well they have them going in there in between the two carbs and they uh, hook up to some sort of it looks like vacuum but that, that is silly they don't go anywhere let me look on this side yeah these things don't go anywhere I think they can be omitted I mean it shows it on the diagram going here but there's nothing there so perhaps oh no you know what as I look closer that is it's totally a fuel overflow so okay that's where they're gonna go boom so there you go one two three items have to be set up on this bad boy and then you're gonna go start lining them up so far so good now I gotta get my my pincher pinch this spring ever so gently Oh, my kingdom for a helper today. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yeah. All right. That's in. That's good. It's tight. Perfect. All right. So I did uh, four and three. I'll then do one and two, and then we'll join them in their final happy marriage at the very end. Okay, so big ass tube little ass tube fuel connector one two three just like that come over on this side pinch our spring oh man line those things up somewhat come on no didn't catch that one in time you know what maybe i'll try it sideways divers do it deeper car builders do it sideways come on come on oh yeah that's the way in you go okay just give that spring a tweak because it's it's close but I want right dead centered all right, so all those tubes are in place now. Feel less stupid, sorry about that, but hey, we all learned something. There's our fuel delivery tube. We're gonna pop it on this side, and then we're gonna marry these two without too much drama, I hope. Looking around on the bench for any more excess parts, and I think we got this Suzuki thing licked. Oh. If only, if only. If only I had an extra set of hands. Okay, so that blew right out of there. And in a very inaccessible place, I tell ya. Alright, let's try this a different way. We'll join the two, and then we'll try to pop the spring in. I don't know. It's been done before. Huh. I tell you, a lesser man had given up by now. They're taking it to me. I said, hey Mike, can you rebuild those carbs for me? And I'd say, yeah, for sure, bud. No problem. 
and I get to go through with all this. Okay, are you gonna? No, you're not. Okay, so let's go back to our first method, which seemed to work so well for the other carbs. So, are we still on there, YouTube? Sure thing. All right, we're gonna pop this screw in here. I think I see now what part of the problem is. This screw is kind of long, so I'm going to back it out by half, one and a half turns. That should give me a little more freedom to put it together. Okay, now pinch our springer, come on. Just like that. Just like that. Woo! So, now we move that throttle, everything moves. Look out, folks. That's right. That's correct as well. Come on. This needs the slightest lightest bit so this is coming in from side one just like so there we go pop our end on here 10 mil just finger tighten this no point in getting too crazy just yet Flip our carbs over. Wow, we're on the B side. Okay, so this uh, setup, as I mentioned, is pretty much the same, just smaller um, spacers. So get our spacers out here, and we go number one. Oh, this one has an odd smell to it. You know, working on old bikes get used to the smell of varnished old gas and such but this one tube here just reeks it's really gross um does that point down does that point out looks like it goes this way so now we got this last little chunk here On the end of the little guy is an 8 mil, and the big guy is at 10 mil. You want it tight. Does not have to be Bubba tight. Here we have it. Now we're gonna bench sink, you know, to look. Actually, this one's open just a bit more. I may just leave that. I was debating turning that screw in again. Well, you know, yeah, so. This throttle plate's touching the top, and this one has just a tiny air gap, and that was that one and a half turns that we took out of this screw. So if I put that back in, it's gonna be half, one, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty good. Closest damage to swearing. I mean, once we get it in on the bike and running, which it'll run because the bench sink says so. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but basically from 
zero, they all match, and then when we go wide open throttle, they're all wide open. So that's about as close you get. I mean, you get feeler gauges and all this stuff, but we didn't mess with any of this when we took it apart. We put it all back together. It's very close to where it was, so it's a pretty easy one to do. When you do go to sink these, your vacuums are just here, and they're pretty easy to hook up to compared to a lot of bikes, Kawasaki and whatnot. So there you have it, Suzuki carb rebuild. Oh, I have one last piece here to show you, and that would be the uh, choke um, connectors. And they connect to each one of those chokey guys, just like so. And then these black plastic things just snap into place. Boom, boom. So now when you pull the choke on, it opens those thusly cable connecting here. There we have it.